everyone, my name is Lauren and welcome to another video from the Tiny Menagerie. The vast majority of fish sold to the aquarium trade these days are tank bred, meaning they have been bred and raised, usually somewhere with a tropical climate, by people specifically for hobbyists all around the world. But there are some fish that are still either completely wild caught, or they have at least a portion of their sales coming from wild caught stocks. These are typically either fish that are very challenging, or just not commercially viable to breed, or their collection can be done in a sustainable and viable way by the people who are native to the area. And this is the case for both the most popular fish, and also those you don't see quite so often, such as these young peacock gobies. And while overall I do generally prefer to buy tank bred fish, mostly just because they are very much easier to keep, because they're already acclimatised to life in an aquarium, but also because of the ecological implications of collection, but sometimes it is worth taking a chance on wild caught, either to get a species that you really want, or to improve the genetics of your own breeding stock if that's what you're keeping them for. But once you've been out and bought your wild caught fish, what are you going to do with them next? Well, about a week ago, I bought these wild-caught gobies from my local fish shop. Although, just to point out, peacock gobies are actually a type of gudgeon, they just get called gobies. And because of their wild-caught nature though, these guys have already had a pretty rough time, having been scooped up from their home and then shipped halfway around the world in a plastic bag. And so, I'm going to do everything I can to give them the best chance of survival. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try really hard to replicate the natural habitat that they have come from. I want to reduce their stress levels as much as I can so that they can focus on feeding and growing, and also to reduce their susceptibility to parasites and pathogens. Now these gobies typically inhabit what is known as black water, that is often very stained with vegetative detritus and tannins and decaying matter, and while I certainly don't have access to any of the leaves that might be found growing in the forests of Papua New Guinea, I do have some very nice just fallen oak leaves that will do a similar job of leaching tannins and lowering the pH. This should soften the water and bring it much closer to what they were used to, certainly in comparison to my tap water. And another thing to note though, is that I have added an awful lot of leaves to quite a small tank, and so there is a risk that they can reduce oxygenation as they decay. To combat this then, I have added a small filter to the back of the tank, and this is going to break the surface of the water when it's running, keeping the oxygen levels nice and high. And the next issue I want to address is parasites. Which wild fish are extremely likely to be carrying, and I certainly do not want to risk them getting into any of my other fish tanks. And while these little gobies actually look supremely healthy, I am really happy with them, they show no outward signs of fin damage or rapid breathing, I am going to treat them just in case which might seem a bit like overkill, and usually I don't treat fish on the off chance they're carrying something. I usually wait to see if there are any signs of it. In this case though, they are very, very small. These fish are only 1.5 centimeters in length, and so a parasite infection could become absolutely catastrophic in a matter of days. And before I've even had time to treat them, they could very easily go from looking great to being dead if a parasitic infection takes hold. And so, I am not going to take any chances. I am going to treat them for parasites, and I'm actually going to use a reduced dose of about 75%. And I'm doing this simply because these fish are so very, very small, and treating the tank for parasites itself is actually quite a stressful thing for fish to go through, because it can really reduce the oxygen saturation of the water. Which, of course, is also what all these decaying leaves are doing as well. And so, a double whammy of high-dose parasite killer plus oxygen sapping leaves could probably kill the gobies just as fast as the parasites. So I am going to try and stick on the safe side and do a lower dose of the medicine and see how we go. If a full dose turns out to be needed later on down the line, then I will just have to come up with a new plan. In the meantime though, the aim of the game is to get them as clean as possible to increase their chances of survival. And while they're also being treated for parasites, I need to get them feeding. Unsurprisingly, they are not very impressed with flake food or any of the other prepared foods, and they flat refuse to eat it. Pellets just get sucked and then spat back out. And so I have bought a nice quintet of different frozen foods for them to try. 
and it's going to be a case of trying them with different foods of different types of different sizes and I will just keep trying new things until I find something that tempts them. What I do not want to resort to doing right now is using live food, and that is because that is a treat in my tank's not a staple diet. When these guys are hungry enough, they will try to eat anything that floats by, same as they would in the wild. And they're not going to starve anytime soon in this tank, because it's been set up for a few weeks prior to me buying the fish, and so it does have a good population of copepods and infusoria in there. Those copepods aren't going to last forever though, and I do need to get them onto frozen food, and then from there, weaned onto the pellets. And another aspect that can actually really help get fish starting to feed, if they're being a bit reluctant, is getting a good circadian rhythm going. That's a nice established day and night cycle. Personally, I have never believed in switching the lights off for new fish and keeping them in the dark or anything like that. To me, at the end of the day, these are prey animals, and night is a very stressful time as them, as it's when they're most likely to get eaten. Instead, I just want to get them used to a nice set photo period as soon as possible, so that they know what's coming. And as many fish are more active at feeding as the sun sets, then as their day comes to a close, they should be more eager to feed, and so when they do see the pellets drifting by, more likely to take a snap at them. And obviously, by far the easiest way to do this is to just use the timer that the light has attached to it. And if it doesn't have one, like mine, then I'm going to have to set an alarm on my phone just so that I can remember to come and switch the lights off at the right time. And hopefully, getting the fish into this sort of rhythm as soon as possible will trigger them to feed as it gets towards the end of the day, just so that they get as much energy as they can before it gets too dark to hunt or look for food in the substrate. But my hopes is, if I can get them clean, get them settled and get them feeding, then these little fish should stand as good a chance of survival as I am capable of giving them. And so you may be wondering, why bother with all this? Why not just buy nice tank-raised fish who have already got quite used to living in an aquarium? Well, for one thing, wild carp fish are better looking, harsh as it sounds. Once you get them settled, they are very robust as well, in fact they are the healthiest stock you will ever come across, because they haven't suffered from all the inbreeding that tank bred ones do. I mean, look at this little chap. He's already absolutely stunning, and he's barely bigger than my thumbnail. And I am hoping to get him, and the others, nice and fat so that I can breed them. But that will very much be a story for the future, and for now, I hope you have enjoyed this little video all about settling wild caught fish into aquarium life. Happy fish keeping everyone, and I will see you again soon. Bye bye!